that's recording. Okay. So now let's uh, let's take a look. Let's fix his problem with his code and talk about it as well. So we're going to go into P1.4, and I'm going to use maybe you should we should use Nano because I I use VI, but you know VI is hard to uh, to learn. This is hard to learn. This VI you have to do a colon. Sorry, not colon, but uh, I for insert mode like this. It's, it's a little tricky. Well, I'll work in VI. All right, so we need to get rid of these uh, strings. Uh, but what I'm going to do here, well, let's run it first. See, it's just printing the strings. As you can see that, look at this. How do I do that? See, uh, this is the output operator, this, this double less than symbol. And that operator has a left-hand side and a right-hand side. So the C out is, it's like the, 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 the target of the operation. It's the thing that's getting written into. And so the other part of the operation, so this is the left-hand side. This is the operation, it's called the output operator. By the way, that operator is called different things. It could also be the left shift operator if it's used in a different context. So unfortunately, some of the operators in C++ have uh, multiple meanings. So this is the left-hand side of the operation. This is the operation. This is the right-hand side. And this semicolon here is that it's, it's the end of the statement. So the right-hand side, this expression, you know, each side of the operator is considered an expression. And the compiler will evaluate the expression, or it will generate code that evaluates the expression at runtime, actually, to be more precise. And so what we have here, this expression is, is called a string, or a string literal. That means it's just what it is. It's not a calculation. We start the string here with this quote, and then we, f we follow the quote with characters, and then we end the string with the quote. So everything is in between those two bookends there. Those are the characters that comprise the string. It's not an expression. That's the expression itself. It's a, it's a simple expression that's just a string. So that's not what we want, in fact. We want a calculation. Let's take a look at that. So really this is what we want. We want, we want the product of those numbers. And I'm going to put a little, I'll put a new line here. Otherwise the result of this expression will be on the same line as the as a result of the next statement here. So let's do that. You see the difference there. Now, when I run it, I get the value. What is that value? Three million? Is that three million? Yeah. Three million six hundred and twenty-eight thousand, like that. Is everyone clear about this? The difference between those two forms? Any question? Okay. All right, so at this point, you know, what Randolph would do after making that, of course, he has to do the other ones as well, right? So we've got to do the other ones too. But, oh, and also the point of this exercise, as I talked about last time, was that. Um, that this doesn't give us the right, here's another way to do it. You can also cascade these. Let me get rid of this. Hmm. Oops, 
Should we undo you? There it is. All right, let me build. Oh, there's an error here. Hey, we got our first error here. So let's take a look at that. So what was happening before was that when we ran the compiler, we just had silence, which is good. It means there's no errors. But when it tells us something, it means there's a mistake that we need to correct. So it tells us the file, main.cpp, the line number, and then some, some text that's hopefully useful in understanding what the problem is. So it says a stray slash in program in line 9. Now we can go ahead and keep reading here, but eh, it's not worth much to go forward and read. We know there's a problem in line 9. It has something to do with the syntax. So let's go ahead and solve that problem. And if you see down here, see down in the lower right hand corner, this is VI, uh, right? Your tool may show line numbers in a different way, but this is line 9. And there is a stray slash. Ah, look at this. See, anyone see the mistake? Yeah, that's it. See, we removed the quote at the beginning because we want this to be a, a mathematical expression. So we tried to convert it from a string to a mathematical expression, but we forgot to take this quote off. So I'm going to take that off. I'm going to put a space in here as well. See that? So now, now this is no longer a string. It's now an expression. 1 divided by 1 plus 1 divided by 2 and so on. Let's build. Let's run. There it is. Oh. This is old. Well, I didn't commit it in there, so that's not committed. But look, 1 divided by 1 is 1. 1 divided by 2 is 0, right? Because that's integer division, remember? Last time we talked about this. So the only value that's non-zero is 1 divided by 1, and that is 1. All the other values are 0. So 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2, so on is actually 1. And that's what the program gives us. See that right there. So that's 1. That's because we're using integer division rather than floating point division. And uh, so that's another part of the problem is so what, what I wanted you to do for this what the book wants you to do is to convert this into floating point into floating point division. And we do that by adding a decimal point to one of the operands in each division operation. So we we made the, um, the first operand a 1.0. So let's see what happens now. There it is. Now, rather, th rather than this is what we get without, with integer division, what we get with floating point division is, is higher, 2.97, so on. That's just an illustration of the difference there. Any questions about about that. Actually, I'm going to bring this up here. Yeah, you could do it there as well. That's right. Let's suppose that, um, let's suppose we put it down here. That's fine. It has to be at least one of them has to be uh, has to have a decimal point. You'll see these have the same value. There it is. They're the same. And uh, that's that's actually 
a common problem that people get stuck on in many different languages. Java for one, another one, and uh, probably some others as well. I can't remember. Right? I, you have to check every time you write code in a language. All right, I'm going to cut.